Welcome to Set the Record. I'm Malcolm Anthony, all the way from Houston, Texas. We got Cody. Yes, sir. What a dude from the 713. There it is, man. Editor in chief, man. Watch out for this guy. Subscribe to the show wherever you're watching YouTube, listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. Give us those five stars, man. We out here working right after games, man. Watch out. Follow us on TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, and Set the Record Pod. Like the Facebook page, Set the Record Podcast. Huge show, great news, all news, sports news. Cody, man, we're ready to drop some knowledge on these folks. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The playoffs have been wild so far, man. It's been it's been some fun series, some fun games going on there. Potentially one of the greatest series of all time unveiling right now, but we'll get to that one later. Playoff Jimmy? Playoff Jimmy. Jimmy wow. G Buckets is here. 56 on the Bucks. Yep. Upsetting the Bucks. The one seed is going 3-1 as the eight seed. Yep. It's crazy to think about. It is kind of wild, honestly. Truthfully, I did not believe this was going to occur. I think I had the the Bucks winning this series in six. I uh, had like a Bucks in five, man. I thought it was... Oh, I lied. I had Bucks in five. Yep. Yep. And, and, and truthfully, I thought they were just going to overpower the Heat. Uh, I did not think, I thought the only guy to show up was going to be Jimmy Butler. And it turns out he's getting some help uh, just a little bit, uh, even tonight, just a right. little bit. Uh, defensively, Kyle Lowry was there. And uh, I, what, uh, oh, what's the, Vincent? What's that? Uh, Gabe, Gabe Vincent. Vincent. Dude, dropped some huge shots. Max Struess in game one. Yeah, right. No, and, and that's what, yeah, Struess in game one in game four tonight was uh, Vincent and, and, other than Jimmy Buckets, obviously, man. It's it, seriously something special to see. So out of the game tonight, do you think the Bucks have a chance to, to make this a seven-game series? I mean, it's the Bucks, so I'm not going to doubt them. It's like okay. straight up, right? But it is infinitely harder to yeah. win one or well, three out of, out of the next four games that you right. have to win. Because if the Heat just win one, you're done. And they advance, and they're going against... Mm-hmm. probably the winner of the well they're going against the winner of Knicks Cavs right right yeah but I mean you just don't want to put yourself in that position and I know it hasn't been all their fault they have a Giannis miss yeah. the first well get hurt get hurt game one right come back mm-hmm. miss the next two games yep right you and then on the other end Tyler Hero is out too so shout out to Jimmy Butler because his second best player is out his third best player wasn't playing like a third best player I don't know he puts the team that's... on his back to me, that's arguable. I think Tyler Hero is uh, an addition. I think he's he's. I'm not sure he's the number. T- I think Kyle Lowry's a offensively better... though. I'm talking about no, like no, I, when it no, comes to getting the buckets. No doubt, no doubt offensively, but I he could be neutralized if someone's on that three point line. I just I'm I'm of the Put side. Put a good of, defender on him, yeah. I, I like Kyle Lowry and what Bam Adebayo can do collectively. I I, I honestly, I, th- I like Jimmy with those two guys and, and a Vincent and a Struess and yeah. uh, that, I mean, tremendous help. I mean, the Heat, I think, are they're playing seven guys who are undrafted right now, which is nuts. That's the Miami Heat. That's their identity. A bunch of guys with a chip on their shoulders, bro. Yeah. Late picks. Yeah. Undrafted guys. <laughs> then you have Tyler Hero, number 13. But, you know, it's just yeah. like... It's crazy, you know. Th- this team's always like that, and I like, I kind of like this mini rivalry that the Bucks and Heat have going on because they meet in the playoffs almost yeah. every year. Seems like every year, and yeah. they've been <laughs> trading just about like who wins what series. The Bucks have the edge, you know, on their overall series, but yeah. I think the Heat might be able to tie it up today. You know, I, I like, true. I don't think I'd be called crazy for saying the Bucks or the Heat would win this because the Heat just have to win one game. Right. And if you have another Jimmy Butler performance like that, easy raps. Easy raps, no doubt. Yeah, and and with uh, Giannis even still being a maybe question mark, you know, you never know what can happen. In an aggravated in- an injury can aggravate at any moment. Look at Kawhi Leonard. Uh, so, mm-hmm. you know, things can happen. So, no, nah, man, this was a phenomenal game. It's going to take a lot for the Bucks to overcome. They've got uh, another game Wednesday night in Milwaukee. So we'll hey, see man. how that one plays out. Jimmy course, Butler is on another level. You said, yeah, big time, big time. Another brother. level. And uh, if we're lucky, uh, the winner of the Knicks and Cavs series will uh, will see one of these two teams. So Speaking uh, of that series. That will, it will be fun. Now, the uh, second series I'd love to talk about today was uh, the number two seed. You know, I like to uh, talk about Boston, talk about Atlanta. Uh, DeJounte Murray suspended for game five. Is that good or bad for the Hawks? <laughs> I mean... Having having a one of your weapons down is always a yeah. a bad thing. But like at 
I, I don't think it would have mattered if he was playing or not. I think it's still Celtics in five. Yep. Nothing's nope. going to stop them. Nope. Agree with you there. I do think uh, the series is over. Um, you know, uh, Trey really doesn't have enough. I mean, I don't know. I, I To me, this team it never had a chance in the Hawks. They, they were just kind of there. They want to play on game, play on game right there, you know, but they, they just happen to be there at that point. No, a hundred percent, hundred percent. Unless you're one of those teams like the Lakers that got hit with injuries or something like that, or some not injuries, but like that just had a bad start, and then you're mm-hmm. all of a sudden fight for your playoff spot. Unless you're one of those teams, you just happen to be there. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. And that, that's kind of like what we're talking about the Miami Heat. They're kind of a team that kind of they they built their way through the play in. They they had a weird season and uh they were obviously better than the eighth seed, you know what I mean? Uh so so being against the Bucks in that spot is you know good for them. Uh yeah, we've I... got another series. We mentioned the Cavs and the Knicks um already, so let's jump on that one. The Knicks as the five seed hold a three one lead over Donovan Mitchell and the 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 Cleveland Cavaliers. What happened there? And I really thought that the Cavs are gonna take that and make it a two two series, you know, to follow the, <laughs> the best of seven train. But I mean, I think ultimately what it comes down to besides, you know, Don just being Donovan Mitchell is like not enough. Um, the Cavs in general have a slow offense. They do. They have a they really and traditional- when it comes to the playoffs, I don't think that works. They are, they're a team that relies on their defense to get their offense going, right? You know, they they get there, they get the tough stops, they go right. score on the other end. But when you have a guy like Jalen Brunson torching you, <laughs> it's Dude, just not Barrett, gonna work. I mean, RJ Barrett really- who had a good game. Yeah, in this in game four that he had a good game, and um, also I thought was really pivotal in this game. Julius Randle ended up sitting the whole fourth quarter just because they didn't coach need decision. him. Yeah, yeah, coach decision because he's he's dealing with the injury that he uh, you know aggravated or at the end of the season, and they're just trying to watch and make sure he doesn't reaggravate it through the playoffs because they're going to need him in round two, uh, depending on if they get the Heat or the uh, the Bucks. Right. I mean it's. Crazy, crazy to think that um uh, one of your best players doesn't play and you're still good to go. You know, Jalen Brunson's that good. R.J. Barrett is having that much of a good game, too. I'll be honest. I think, uh, well, other than De- uh, uh, Mitchell, Don- Donovan Mitchell not having a good series, Karis LeVert also isn't having a great series, in my opinion. I think, like, they're not I mean, getting a lot. Of- Karis What's LeVert up? hasn't had a great season, really. Well, I- He's been he's been like he's been like a very like hit or miss player. It's like when he's hitting, he's hitting. When he's not, he's really not. So it's, he's been up and down really throughout the whole time. Mainly down hasn't been the Karis Levert that we were used to seeing like two years ago, right? No, not at all, not at all. And that's what that's it's what been I thought for him. Yeah, the Cavs needed, and because defensively they have it. I mean, I saw them play Oklahoma City this season. They play good, play, play a good brand of basketball, but uh, like you said, it might not be a, a good fit for the playoffs. Right. And in the one game that they did win, actually, Karis LeVert had a good game. That was one of those games <laughs> where he makes a shot. The, the irony, yeah, no, for sure. And that's that's what I'm saying. So, like, the cat in game three, even the Knicks held them down to 79 points, winning that game by 20. But that game, in, in, like I said, in game three, nobody showed up for the Cavs. Jared Allen, six points. Garland, 10 points. Oakley, 10 points. Like, that's not enough. Um, and, and Donovan Mitchell only getting 22 as well. So, like... They're not doing enough offensively. You mentioned that, uh, and and I, I honestly I'm shocked because I I thought the Knicks would lose this series. I thought the Cavs had them, um, but it'll be cool to see the Knicks in the second round of the playoffs. That's not something we've had I really in a long. I think since Carmelo the Hawks, been. or was that the first round that one year? I'll be honest. I don't remember. It's been, no, no, like, it was a first round matchup. It was a first round matchup. I was like, I think the the Knicks haven't been to the second round. They haven't since been to the second round in a minute. No, that's gonna it's gonna be so crazy was, to see Knicks fans just listening to the game, the environment of it. Yeah, because they're they were like, where are we? I don't I don't even know about the second round. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it's gonna be, man. This is, the, this is the series you've been waiting to talk about. I think uh, we've been we've been waiting on a slow burn oh, here. Yeah. And, uh, we've got uh, the Nets. And the <laughs> Philadelphia 76ers. And uh, that ended pretty quickly, man. 
It was as as predicted. As it predicted. was a sweep. You know, everyone knows I've been aside from my hometown teams, I've been team Philly for the playoffs all year. That's right. And you know, handled the Nets, you know, in quick fashion, four game series. As everyone predicted, it's not like nothing crazy happened in this game. What I like about this Sixers team, though, is that they have four guys on their team that could go off and be the guy on any any given night, and we got to see a little bit of that this series, right? We no, got for sure. Joel Embiid be Joel Embiid in the first game, right? We had um, I think I think Harden had oh no, Harden had a bad game game two, but um, um game two you guys had uh you had Maxi go off for thirty three. It was Maxi, yeah. And then, he, and then Maxi took over in the third quarter, or fourth quarter too, that one game. We had Tobias Harris be the guy most recently. He was the guy that, that led the Sixers going on to the to the next round with Harden and Embiid. Well, well, Embiid and Harden ejected. That's what it was. Yeah, right. Yeah, Tobias Harris. Kind of hard to remember which game happened. 25 when. and 12. They all kind of blend together after a while. Right. Uh, but, Plus, you had what? Uh, what's this dude's name? Uh, Paul Reed come uh, come out. Paul for Reed you. is uh, Paul Reed and DeAnthony Melton have been like the MVPs of that series. Like seriously, what they no. what they do doesn't show Defense. up on the stat sheet, but when they do something, it's yeah. noticeable. Paul yeah, Reed well, think, <laughs> was crazy. He go after Luke got balls, a rebound, go behind the back, up up. Yeah, all all of the above. These guys are are they work hard for the minutes they play, and 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 every bit of that. And like I said, Paul Reed got ten and fifteen. Uh, double double to end the series, and and that'll be huge. You need guys like a Reed. Uh, you mentioned Shake um, and and Melton. You're gonna need McDaniel's, Nyang, Harrell, all these guys off your bench to be huge against Boston. You yeah. know what I mean? Because that's gonna be a f- man. You need. Whew. They don't have a, a crazy scoring bench, right? But they have a a bench that will fight. You know, they they're gonna get down. They're gonna get dirty. They're gonna do what they need to do. Shout out the Anthony Melton for the um, uh, for that game winning steal and layup in game three or four, right? Well, and you're gonna need so much of that. Like I said, the Celtics they got the sixth man of the year. They've got you know obviously JB. They got JT. They 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 got Marcus Smart, former Defensive Player of the Year. Man, we've got they've got Boston's a hell of a team. As I sit here with my Lakers hat. Um, <laughs> And uh, no, truthfully, man, they're 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 a tough out for anybody. And, like and, and be a similar series, series. this series like defensively, the, yeah, no, in the se- the seventy sixers Celtics series, I think might be like the Kings Warriors series, like just an excellent can't take your eyes off the screen kind of series. Mm-hmm. Every time they've met, it's been a, an elite game, amazing game. No, so yeah, I know I look forward to the series big time, and and truthfully, I look forward to watching James Harden either show up or not show up. Uh, because this is uh, this is the time of the year where you're you're kind of wondering uh, what James you're gonna get, I suppose. Um, you know, playoff play, playoff James is nothing like playoff Jimmy, right? And the good thing is, you know, James Harden kind of got his bad his bad series out of the way. You know, <laughs> you think he, this is bad? <laughs> well, I mean, game two was bad. His numbers, game three numbers, wasn't the greatest. He good numbers. The numbers were good. Yeah, by had, the numbers, like, it wasn't bad. I'm saying, like, he had that one game where he was breaking everyone's ankles, but he couldn't hit a layup, you know? The, like, those types of games. He right. was impactful. He was moving the ball around. It's just it's just those games where he can't hit shots is, is one thing. Yeah, because, I mean, he was 17, five, and uh, five rebounds, almost nine assists a game, you know? Uh, I mean, really, that's, I mean, pretty fantastic. I mean, so. we need him to have, like, 17 and 11. I mean, 25 and 11, maybe, you know? Uh, that's what James Harden we need at this point. Like that's what I'm well, saying. Right that, now, that first round wasn't his best series. Right now you got three guys averaging 20 points. You need that fourth guy to be James Harden. Right now you got Tyrese, yep. Maxi, Harris, and Embiid all averaging 20 points. Where James is at 17 throughout the playoffs. And I agree. It, to to make this a real competitive series with Boston, I think you're gonna need all four of those guys to average 20 points. Yep. No right, doubt. Well, yeah, man. No freaking doubt. So we've had a pretty good discussion of the Eastern Conference. And with the Western Conference, do you think there is any hope? <laughs> nope. 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 <laughs> Shout out to Anthony Edwards for keeping his promise. You know, it's not going to be a four-game series. And he delivered, right? Uh, no, but you it are. Will be yeah, a five-game yeah. series. Yeah, it was just well before, but it'll be five. No, no, and, and truthfully, that was a hell of a freaking game by Ant. 
Um, you, you love to see those kind of performances in these playoffs. Uh, just like we got out of Jimmy just now, you want to see superstars be super, you know? Um, and, and with Cat fouling out in game, what, at game four, uh, you they know, don't match it, together. No, not at I'm, all. And, I'm talking and, about and, the games. What's up? Like the games, they all mesh together. It's like you, 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 no. you don't remember. Yeah. No, they all. Every, that's what's so hard about discussing the playoffs, even at all, because like it all, it like it's like did this baseball. happen game two or three? Like was or yeah, was it game yeah. four? Yeah, type stuff. It's a blend. It's a blend. But this, like I said, this last one um, was seriously. It was awesome because Nikola Jokic had a tremendous game as well. Uh, almost a forty point triple double. He was missing some assists in this one. Uh, landed the double double and and truthfully I think it would this team the the Minnesota Timberwolves I think they're gonna have to trade cat right I mean they kind of pigeonholed themselves into that scenario where it's like you've kind of gutted your team yep. to to get Rudy Gobert to get a guy that you thought was going to elevate you to a different level you're in a worse position this year that you were last year you can't trade that guy again because his his values went from here to here. <laughs> you're not going to yeah. trade Anthony Edwards because you're crazy. Yeah. If you trade Anthony yeah. Edwards. Yeah. I think their best move is I don't know how much money they have this free agency or maybe even trading Cat and building around Edwards. But I mean, I don't know. I don't know if you want to give up on on Cat that like like that. But at this point, if you have to move somebody for the most value, he's the guy you have he's to the move. Guy. Yeah, he's the guy to move for like for the most value. Yeah, and unfortunately, I wouldn't want to lose him, but they're exactly. in a position. Exactly, that's the thing. Like, you don't want to lose a player of that talent, but sometimes you're you're forced to make decisions you don't want to make. I mean, look at Shaq and Kobe. Yeah, I mean, nobody wanted to. Tra- no one wanted to trade Shaq. <laughs> nobody wanted to do that. And you know uh, what? Maybe maybe they can do with the Kings. It make the most of it, right? Where it was like either Fox or Halliburton. They traded Halliburton. They made it work. Right. Yeah. At the time, it was seen as it was seen to be a horrible trade, right? It was like, what are they doing? They, they're trading this guy when they have the other guy they should have traded. Look at Sabonis this. and look at it now. Look at them go now. Yeah, I think both teams actually benefited pretty well from that trade. But I know yeah, I man. totally agree. And the Pacers have somebody that they can build their own franchise around in Halliburton yep. now. No, no big time. No, I, I like. So move. if they can do something like that, you know, where it's where they can trade one of those guys and actually get a, a good piece in return and we're like multiple pieces, you know, then sure. But that's just about all we have to say for this series. I'm pretty sure. Right. Yeah, no, I totally agree. Game fives uh, Tuesday at Denver. I think uh, it ends <laughs> at Denver. I think that's yep. the end of the series. Um, we move on to tonight's game. Um, not sure where we're at. I know the first quarter just ended a few moments ago. Lakers up 12 currently. There we go. Um, yeah, Lakers, seven seed going against the Memphis Grizzlies. And truthfully, they're not even a seven seed. Just like the Miami Heat on the other side were not a legit eight. Lakers probably could have been a four or five if they had a healthy team throughout the season, if they had traded Rush last season, all of the above. But here they are beating the Grand- Memphis Grizzlies. Um, and, and honestly, I, we bo- I think we both saw it happening this way. Uh a little bit, yeah. I had some some faith in the Grizzlies, but then no, nah, it, it went away quick. Yeah, I mean, it, well, it didn't help that Ja uh, Ja got he, hurt. Ja got hurt, and you got Brooks, Dylan being, Brooks, yeah. BM Dylan Brooks. Yeah, yeah. All disrespect to that guy, you know. Uh, yeah, I. He yeah, he's trying to not be the villain, but man, he played right into it. Nobody's ma- I, He's not I, a that's villain. That's the thing, too. It's just like he, he's talking about, you know, uh, well, the media and the fans portray me this way as if he doesn't have a big part in being portrayed that way. We His literal name is Dylan the Villain. <laughs> exactly. It's like we they, they didn't pick a name out of a hat and it met, and it happened to be Dylan Brooks. No, Dylan Brooks has the antics and people yes. were like, yo, he's kind of doing villain things. Yeah, yeah, villain-esque. The hey, best know? he can do is just take the Trey Young uh, route and embrace it, man. Just oh, big time, big time. Be the be the guy, like like because Trey Trey in New York is is the most hated man in the world. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like you got to take that, run with it, and and truthfully, uh, Brooks, I think he'll be so much better if he embraces this role. Uh, look at Draymond Green, even he knows he's kind of the bad guy. You know, he knows that that's his role. He's the enforcer. He's the the guy who gets the the Dennis Rodman of today, so to speak, um, and, and and Dylan Brooks can fit that role. I mean, truthfully, he, he's that kind of guy. Um, 
I just thought it was super disrespectful to 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 dog on a a a, a goat. You know, uh, you know, what I'm saying like LeBron. Yeah. I just, yeah, yeah. Anyways, um, Lakers win the series. I think it's gonna go another couple games. Uh, Lakers can close this one out, uh, dude. Are we gonna get seven games out of the Kings and Warriors? I think we might. I, mean, I don't I, know anymore because Aaron Fox um fractured his his shooting hand. Yeah, well, it's on his. I thought it was his. He's his, left-handed. His left-handed. Yeah, left-handed. He's left-handed. Left-handed. Yeah, right. Exactly, and that's that's crucial. He's doubtful for game for yep. game five. So, I mean, their only saving grace here is that it's a Kings home game. Yeah, it so is. So you gotta hope that you gotta hope that Malik Monk goes crazy. Probably. I'm about to say Monk and Sabonis gotta Sabonis. do it. <laughs> but Sabonis has been been battling hard down low every game. It hasn't been easy for him. So you know he's been being, he can he's really kind of been utilized a little bit. Exactly. So if he can really just break out for one game and just kind of hold it down while Fox, he might force himself to play game six if, if they win. This Honestly, game. it'd be better for him to be a decoy out there than anything. If he can ball, if he can be on the floor, it, I, I think it would be beneficial. But, you know, uh, the coach might see something different. And maybe Malik Monk can lead the charge. And he's proven to drop 40 at any given moment. Um, he's that type of player. He's your spark plug, you know. Big time. Exactly. Yeah, I don't know. Why. Lakers shouldn't have lost him, but I, uh, I do think this can be a seven-game series for real. No, no, no doubt. I do. I as well see it that way. I still think the Warriors are going to win it in seven, but uh, we'll see how that plays out. And I think that that injury to that pointer finger definitely helps my position a little bit more. But another I, bailout I, year. I had that from the beginning. Hey, the Warriors bailout plan, man. It's the government. The government pushed the plan out years and years ago. It, it, it's it's it, every it, year. <laughs> it we follow through with it. We know what we're looking for. The Warriors bailout plan. Um yeah. <laughs> sad day. <laughs> I'm sorry, Cody. I'm sorry. <laughs> At least it was mentioned. We have it in our pod. We we it's it's been said. So it's in the universe. Uh maybe it'll be shut down. And and really, we've got the Warriors are gonna face the Lakers in the next series if they go. I mean, so that's already tough enough. As I don't want any of those teams to win. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, I'm always in a horrible position in, in the playoffs where I don't want any of those West teams to win, honestly. Oh, man. You don't want the West to win? No, well, no I okay. I just have more teams I dislike win. in the West than the East. That's all there is to it. Yeah. No, I, I feel that. I'm, I'm probably I'm probably close to that. Like I said, the only team I just don't want to see on the East side win is the Celtics. I do not like the Celtics. Never. Never root for the Celtics, uh, but um, yeah, on the on the the West side, I don't. I truthfully, if anybody from the West won, I'd be pretty happy about it. Um, Grizzlies, even. I mean, they're they're playing my team, but I'd love to see Ja win one. You know, like certain guys, you just be happy for if they got it. Um, right. I like the Grizzlies on the court. I just don't like the antics. That's all it is. No, well, yeah, like the Grizzlies have, are good. No, yeah. they are, but they they haven't done it long enough. So they they're, they're talking as if they've won one. <laughs> right they, they're out here talking to like multiple time champions yeah. you know like if they're on their level and they got smacked after that you know so it's like you know I, you're kind of doing it to yourselves at this point you know no, but yeah I totally totally agree um no, all right man all right i see you uh the last team who i definitely don't want to win is the sun's clippers clippers i don't want to see them win i forgot about them i hate the clippers uh but good thing is they're playing the suns and kevin durant and uh this see this series should end uh, the next game as well right well to um uh contrast you i don't want the suns to win <laughs> i don't either i mean well, listen I, I like the, the clip okay so i like the clippers i don't like westbrook but I also don't like the sun, so it's like I'm in another lose-lose situation here. But, right. <laughs> which which forces me, listen, if I'm in a lose-lose, it forces me to be honest and non-biased. Because I don't okay. want any of these teams to win, but I it's it's Suns. Suns winning. Kawhi yeah, Leonard out for game five again at, at the end of the day. I don't know Kawhi, if you I don't know if you ever heard not- this. But at, at the beginning of the, at the beginning of the season, Stephen A. Smith had a list of like players who have like the top top five players who have the most approved, something like that, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. And he had Kawhi Leonard on his list. And the reason why, like, people were like saying, "Yo, that's kind of dumb. Why, like, he's he's been proven he's a multiple time champion. He's done it with this team and that team." His reasoning was he has to prove that he can go be that guy and be reliable when the team really needs it. And, you know, when, when you put it that way, I think he's right. And Kawhi hasn't been able to prove that for the past three, four years now. 
Or, oh, no, the no, past uh, three years, I, three years. The year he won the championship, he Last three years. He, right, he did win it with the but Rockets. Like, but he won that. He won that because the Warriors fell apart. Dude, the, the Rockets good. get swept. <laughs> they get swept. Maybe they win one game. Dude, dude, against Kevin Durant, Steph Curry, Clay Thompson. Dude, if Curry, I mean, if if, if What Clay, series are you if, talking about? What we series are you? The, the Raptors versus the Warriors. You said Rockets. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I was like, huh? <laughs> no, 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 I'm you, saying. You threw me off there. Okay, okay. That, that was my bad. The 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 Warriors versus the the Raptors. I, I do think, yeah, the Warriors so they looked were like they were dominating that game when games. Kevin Durant was playing. Yeah, when Kevin Durant was playing, he was giving them buckets. Then he went down and it all turned around. The clay went down and then boom. It was over. So, yeah. like, Kawhi, Kawhi got himself uh, a government reprieve. Uh, but, uh, but Kawhi's check- run itself, like, the teams he had to go through, he had to go through. He he reverse swept the Bucks after going down 2-0. He hit well, the then shot he, against he, Philly. They got the shot against Philly. That so, was it's it. like the run before the finals is all was all really good. Hey, and that but- shot against Philly, I called that. Like, before the t- – on the inbound, I said, they're going to yeah. pass it to Kawhi in the corner – and that was like that's his shot when he played for the Spurs. I knew exactly where he yeah, was going. It is his shot. It's his but, shot. But yeah, man, that's just the thing about Kawhi is like he can't show up. Like you talk about players not showing up when it matters. Like when it comes to like playing good, Kawhi Leonard literally doesn't show up. Like he doesn't play. <laughs> and yeah, that's okay, that's but, another problem in itself. Right, but 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 you not you not see what Ty Lu said today. Like the man is actually injured. He's got yeah, a right. Yeah. The right I mean, that's not his fault. I know this time isn't his fault. There's been load management all season and throughout his career. And that that is true. The load management thing's been very annoying. That the one thing I hate about today's NBA uh, and Kawhi and the gimmicky basketball load management, it makes this whole thing terrible. Um and Kawhi, as great as he is, this takes a hit on his legacy because he's not available. I do agree. It just sucks because it's not it, – this one isn't his fault. You know, it just yeah. – uh, his body let him down. And and with Russ uh, and Norman Powell, <laughs> I just don't think they're going to get another game. Man, uh, Kawhi Leonard has to have, like, the top five worst knees of all time, bro. It's, it's crazy. It's Kawhi, time. yeah. Big time. You know, because truthfully, he might be one of the most talented guys we've we've seen in the NBA in a long time. Defensively, offensively, what he can do, his body let let him down, you know. And I, I feel bad because to be that good of a player and only play like 60% of your games every year, yeah. it, 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 it has to suck, especially because I know ballers, they want to go out and they want to play, right? Oh, yeah. Imagine, imagine wanting to go out and hoop and be, being told no because your knee is hurt. Man, on that Blood note, body. also another guy I feel bad for is um just on the side note, Victor Oladipo, man. Oh man, yeah, heartbreaking. And they still got Players the dub with him. I think that's what part of the part of the reason that drove them a little bit is is that injury. You know, seeing seeing their guy go get hurt like that. Part I mean, it sucks. That. I feel bad for for Oladipo. He he just can't seem to catch a break, and it like it really shows how much it, it affects like him on court. I mean, you just yeah, it's sad. Because he he had man it, it, seriously so much potential and he's I mean obviously a still very good basketball player but uh, with all these injuries adding up time and time again it, you, you might look for a uh, I mean a coaching position or, or something to be a part of the NBA where you're not well he said he intends on playing so I get it but man I just if your body's failing you that much it's it's I don't know I I, I wish him the best so whatever he wants to do uh, I I hope he he does that speedy uh, recovery so I, man. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt, man. So, the playoffs. We're looking for second right. round. We are enjoying these playoffs. And, uh, look, I think something else we enjoyed over the weekend uh, was was Tank Davis uh, uh, fighting uh, old Garcia, man. Young, 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 young little fella. Ryan. <laughs> nah, he did, uh, look, 24 years old going in against a vet uh, in Tank. Um, it was a good fight on Saturday that ended with a hell of a body shot, if anyone didn't 
didn't catch that body shot. Uh, yeah, and, and and dude took a like a knee, man. Like, like he was still good to fight until he wasn't. <laughs> it like, was like oh. it, it hit him. It was like a delay, you know. That's what the that's what the liver shot does to you. It's like, oh, right, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. I am. No, I am not good. good. <laughs> <laughs> I am no longer okay. And the and funny yeah, thing is, is, he was like this. Oh yeah. <laughs> way, like I was like, bro, you gonna get up? <laughs> And I right. know that shot. I've been hit there. That is, is, is debilitating. Um, it, it's a really painful shot. And it shot. takes long to like, actually register to your body, too. And the funny yeah. thing is, is that's like Garcia's shot. Like, he's the one, he's yeah. the guy that's hit the liver shot on people before to finish fights. And he was on the other end of it tonight or last yeah. night. Yeah. And, and truthfully, I, I want there to be another rematch uh, in that fight, but I'd love it to be in like five years. I'd love I'd love Garcia to get a few more fights under his belt. I'd love Tank to continue dominating like he is. 29 fights. He's got 27 knockouts. There's not many people with records like that. That's usually like a heavyweight kind of statistic. Yeah. Because I mean, you look at Mayweather's wins, he got 50 wins and I think only 23 were knockouts. Like, when you when you get into realms like it's just kind of insane with, with a guy such small in stature and frame that he's got such power behind those hands so that's something to definitely keep keep your eye on in the boxing world over the next couple of years um another thing that we have to obviously keep our eye on and entertained with is this nfl off season so we finally had the biggest trade of the off season happen today finally, finally. happened right I thought it was going to happen a little bit later. I honestly thought it was going to, I thought they were going to wait post draft considering it, it's kind of been so long already. Um, I yeah. thought it was going to be after the draft, but it happened today. And um, the hall was pretty significant. Um, the hall was pretty significant. The Jets, uh, you got the stats on that? Yeah. So the Jets get Aaron Rodgers, pick 15, a 2023 fifth round pick, which is 170. Okay. And the Packers get, Pick number 13, 2023, pick 42. Okay. Sixth round pick, which is 207. A conditional 2024 second round pick that becomes a first if Rodgers plays 65% of the plays. Okay, bet. Yeah, you know what? That's a great deal. And I think that's good compensation, right? Yeah, no, that'll become a first yeah. round pick. Rodgers is going to play. He doesn't, even when he doesn't, like like last season, he, got, he sat out a little bit, it, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, they'll be fine with that. Uh, they'll be fine. I mean, last like, season he sat out, but like playing, you know, in Green Bay kind of sucked the life out of him, I feel like. <laughs> so it's like, do you really want to play? No, no. Yeah, and I agree. Right, right. I agree with that. I think uh, Aaron Rodgers' time was just spent there. And I think uh, with this new, kind of like Tom Brady, man, they just showed up and uh, he did his job and they won the Super Bowl. I'm not sure it's going to go quite like that in, in, in uh, New York. But um, I think he's got the opportunity to take a Jets team to the playoffs, which is going to be special in its own. Right, right, right. Um, speaking of, we had one more piece of information. Oh, Jalen Hurts. Right. We never talked about it. No, we never talked about the news. I know we were kind of. This is super late, but, you know. Branching over football. But but it is still relevant for the for the, the football offseason. So we've got the Eagles. Jalen Hurts got a $255 million deal million dollar deal and 179.304 is guaranteed which makes that the most um highest average in nfl history at 51 million a year and it's the third most guaranteed money behind kyler murray and deshaun for my namesake watson so um so uh look jalen hurts Huge contract, big news for Philly, and I think it's great news for Philly. Uh, I think they still have the opportunity to win the division next year. They're the best team in the division. Um, great, hey. you know. He got a bag, great. but he ain't satisfied. Right? Nah, in, in, in his words, money is nice, but championships are better. Dude, right? and so, that, that you know, guy's guy still in a good that. position to win championships too. Yeah, no, that guy believes that. I, I truly, Jalen has got that mind to to go after the dub and not just the bag. So I, I like that. I like that. And and I honestly, uh, I'm shocked uh, that a guy like Jalen can get that kind of money when a guy like Lamar, who's got an MVP, who's dragged the team to the playoffs, who's won a playoff game after being doubted before losing a playoff game. 
They don't want to pay him. I don't get it. Uh, so it's it's kind of confusing. So when you see this, the Jalen Hurts, you're happy for a Jalen Hurts who's got their money, but you're confused uh, when a Lamar Jackson, who one could argue is as good, if not better, than Jalen. <laughs> you know, uh, MVP would say, you know, at least he's qualified. You know, he didn't make it yep. to a Super Bowl quite like Jalen, but um it's weird like i said it's weird if they don't trade lamar as of right now the tag lamar will get 32.4 million dollars um any team has the opportunity to throw more money at him than that but the ravens can match it so it's 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 a weird situation they're in with him and i'm not sure who's going for lamar i think he's just gonna take his money this season and leave honestly if i'm lamar i take i play for that 32 million yeah and i I do not but they've got him over the next two seasons they can tag him again next year man so like that could be your your formidable years in the nfl wasted on a franchise that clearly doesn't believe in you even with odell beckham there i mean because odell's a broken commodity no offense. I mean, I think he's fantastic, but he's not. He hasn't been proven to be very healthy over the last three seasons. It just it just kind of sucks for Lamar. It's, it's a tough situation. I don't know why the Ravens don't believe in him or why they don't really want to pay him. I mean, I feel like, I don't know, he, he's going to do what he got to do to get his money eventually one day, but it might be too late. You know, That's what's sad is it might be too late for a guy like Lamar who clearly doesn't uh deserve this kind of treatment from the ravens man dude great show i can't believe we packed all of this into this episode uh truthfully a lot going on here thanks for watching thanks for listening uh i'm malcolm anthony that's cody uh subscribe to the show of course wherever you watch or listen uh meditate make it go away sure